Hi, you're very welcome. Today we're going to uh, show you around our kitchen garden orchard and we're going to talk about what I did here about five years ago and I planted some of these trees, a variety of apple trees, pears and uh, some plum, some cherry. So let's uh, start here with this particular one. It's uh, Annie Elizabeth and it's uh, an Irish apple, a very good apple. And I got this particular apple on an M27 rootstock. Now what I'm trying to achieve here is to get these trees to actually grow on their own roots. Now, anytime you buy a fruit tree, it's always on a rootstock. Whether it's a small rootstock like an M27 or uh, a big rootstock like the M25. And um, what I did in this particular case is I went down. You'll see here that the rootstock is in fact no longer in the tree. It's sending out uh, roots, but it's not because it was this is because of grass that was around there. But the actual root or the rootstock itself is submerged into the soil and the scion. When the scion is the top of the, the tree, uh, which is, uh, is going all the way down into the soil, the soil, when it comes in contact with the soil, it sends out roots. And at that stage in time, it will go on its own rootstock. Now, the reason I picked the small rootstock of an M27 is because I want uh, the, its own root to overcome or overpower the rootstock of the M27. So that's what will happen in time. M27 doesn't get very big, but in its own time, this will get to its natural size, be grown on its own roots, and it will hopefully have very uh, good fruits. Now, there is a lot, there is a man who did a lot of research on own rootstocks. Uh, his name is U. Ehrman, and um, he was of the philosophy that. The, any apple tree or any indeed a lot of any fruit tree that's grown on its own rootstock is more flavorful and is also more resilient to any pests and diseases that may or may it may encounter so you might be asking well, why in the world when I go to a nursery are they always on a rootstock on not on their own rootstock well the reason for this is because people want to have a, a tree that will grow to a certain size they want to know what size it will be and they want it to um, uh, only achieve that size and no bigger or no uh, within that range. So, uh, and also they want it to come into fruit uh, pretty quickly. So those are the two maybe possible disadvantages of having a known rootstock. You have to wait that little bit longer for your fruit to come, but when they do come, they will be very good. And um, that is one of the reasons why. Now, there is another technique of getting a, an own root apple stock. What I mentioned to you before was to submerge the root stock into the soil and build uh, your soil around it. But what you can do also is you can take something like a bin or any such thing. You can put that next to your, your tree and you can bring down the branch going through your bin. Now this is a small branch, so I wouldn't be doing it in this, but you'll get the idea. And then you fill the soil with, uh, you fill the, excuse me, you fill the bin with the soil and you can notch or cut, damage the wood a little bit by one of the buds. And what that'll do is it'll encourage the branch to send in roots into that soil. And within, um, let's say, if you give it a year a little, or even a little bit more, at that stage, then you can separate it from its parent tree. And that little branch, whatever that is, will then be on growing on its own rootstocks. And it can be transplanted where you want it. Now, you're saying to yourself, well, I don't have a bin. It's no problem. You could also do what they call layering. It's the same technique, going all the way to the ground. You need a longer branch, the, and you need to keep the way the the weeds but it's the, it's the same principle and that's how you get your tree on its own rootstock so now we're going to show you a little tour of our uh, fruit trees here as I said to you this is Annie Elizabeth 
and we'll show you some of our uh, fruits. They're just uh, coming in here. Uh, let's go down here. Now it's quite dry, so we're hoping that this will be okay. Uh, we left the grass kind of along around the, the tree, and that's to let the moisture, keep the moisture in there. You, if you want to, in, in hot weather, uh, you, you, it's important to have uh, the, the very younger tree to have all the moisture that it needs. So we'll go along and we'll take you over to um, another tree which is scrumptious and scrumptious is an apple tree and um, I also put this particular tree on its own rootstock so if we were to go down here it's on all it's on an M27 initially that M27 is then submerged well into the soil and it's built up around wherever the rootstock was. If, for example, the rootstock was here, I would have submerged all of this with soil going well above it. And then this tree then will take its own roots. And that's your own rootstock principle. So now we see that this tree is on its own uh, rootstock at this stage. So we will uh, go over here. And um, over, over here we have a pear tree, uh, Durando. It's got a, the, with the, with the blue string going around it. Now, what we can use sometimes for um, posts and staking trees, and that's another uh, area for uh, a debate. Do you stake a tree? Or do you really need to stake a tree? And the answer probably depends on what size the tree is. Um, if it's a young one-year-old tree, I would say no, no. And you want it, if you, if you can at all, leave it unstaked. And this will allow the tree to develop that strength that, uh, to become accustomed to its, uh, to sit out the roots that it needs to support itself. It will quickly establish the, what, it, what it needs. Whereas when sometimes, when they're on the, when they're supported, they'll sometimes overgrow and not concentrate enough on, on roots. So, if you do have to put a stake down, the philosophy here is to keep that stake lower and even lower possibly than what I have here. Chop it down and keep that at, 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 at a low rate here. Not all the way up here. And you'll see sometimes uh, I might have done that and I, it was a mistake on my part. Knowing what I know now and uh, what I'd like to share to you, I wouldn't do that. I would keep that stake down lower if indeed I need to stake the tree and that will uh, give it the support it needs even in a windy uh, location so that the tree can move around and it's letting the roots say mm, yeah we still need to put roots out there it's getting that hint that it really needs to to uh, grow uh, as opposed to having a stake all the way up here where eh, what do I need to worry about roots for? You know, I'll, I'll just put on more, more growth, and it won't. Um, um, if that wouldn't be good, because then it would be you'd get a it would get a pretty big shock when it comes to the time where you're taking that support away, and then it is um, left vulnerable. So we'll move along. This particular variety here is called Cavan Sugarcane, and you can see the fruit set here. Still very early stages. If we can come in here. Okay. Up here. What happens when it sets this fruit is that it's possible, it's probable indeed, that, that it will lose a few of these apples and it will concentrate. See? It's already, this one's already fallen off. That's what it'll do. It'll concentrate its growth onto one or maybe two uh, per bud. And uh, that, is, that is it. So that apple has a good tendency. You don't have to worry too much about tending it usually. With other fruit, you actually have to tend them. This here is uh, another Annie Elizabeth. Now this Annie Elizabeth, I did not put on its own rootstock. I have it well supported and it's on an M26 rootstock. And you can see 
the root stock down here in this particular case. I've exposed it, which is actually quite close to the um, to the ground, probably closer than it than it should be, but it'll be down here. Okay. This variety is another apple. It's called Court Pindu Plat. And this is, uh, I, th I think it's a French variety, if I'm not mistaken. Now, we had, um, with our pear tree, with, we had a lot of very strong winds that hit us. And consistently, really, really strong. So, it has taken uh, one or even more of our pear trees down. And in this case, whipped it down. You can see the heavy foliage that's on the tree and uh, it needs to support. Uh, it, it wasn't able to support it. Now I didn't obviously try own rootstocks on the pears uh, because a pear rootstock they either come in uh, a pyrus rootstock or they're on a quince rootstock and if they're on a quince they're on a smaller rootstock and this particular one is on a quince rootstock and it is not able uh, to support it. Now what you what I did here is put in a tree guard. But you know something, instead of using some of these like this, what I would use, and I have used since, is uh, a two liter bottle of something like a two liter plastic bottle of Coke or 7-Up. And you cut the top off the 7-Up, cut it off the bottom, cut off the bottom, and uh, then fit it in with a slit going through the, the bottle vertically and it will fit in as a guard to the tree to protect it from uh, ra hares and um, rabbits. And, uh, and that's only really needed when the tree is, is, is younger. When it gets older, you don't have to worry. So we'll come over here. Um, as I said to you in an earlier video, I always love to have garlic. And so we have some garlic here. And it's great, particularly good to have it around your fruit trees. Garlic and comfrey. And the garlic for the health of the tree to help with pests, pests that's around. They're not too fond of that, generally speaking. And the comfrey for that nutrient rich uh, fertilizer that, it, that the tree would uh, get from the, um, the comfrey. Here we have um, a black currant cuttings. And you can see our black currants. And they are on their well on their way. Here we have a couple of more, a uh, few more pears. This one is Kamis and Dayon Kamis, and uh, it has set fruit, but uh, or not set fruit. It has uh, buds, but I don't know if it has the fruit really yet. And with the dry weather and the wind that we've had, it's taken a real toll on on our pear trees in this location. At, a, at another at a other orchard up at the uh, granary, they, that is not the case. And uh, this one here is Bet. And again, Bet is another victim of the wind. It has been taken off of its um, stake that I had for it. And it has, uh, it's, it's, has leaning over. So I'll have to be careful about how I'll work with this. I won't probably do anything with it at this time of the year. It's very dry. We haven't really hot weather, fantastic weather. And if you do anything too extreme in this weather to the tree, you probably will lose it. So better to leave that to the, either to the back end of the fall of the year or in the spring. So uh, I want to show you one of our failures and this is uh, <laughs> uh, another bet pear. And this one practically died on us. I think we think that there's still some life in it because we did the skin test on it. And it's just barely hanging on there. And you can do the skin test by, you can just see there, just a little moisture. And uh, it's got that yellowish green, so it's kind of either just hanging on there possibly. And um, we put the, or I put the, the chicken wire around it uh, as another alternative, now our steak is still broke and that's probably my fault for not giving it the attention that it needed and to get it restaked. Uh, 
so we'll move on. RL, and it's a M27, again, rootstock. I did the same thing on this one. You can see the, the amount of apples that's on this. It's uh, pretty incredible. Now, you see this little apple here, something like that I'd expect it to go through if, there, if we don't get more heavy winds. Something like, uh, we see maybe a weaker ones here. They may, this may not make it, it'll probably fall off. So that's what, you know, there'll be a natural tenon of the apples so that the you know, strongest and the better one will go on to produce for you in, the, in a particular bud. And um, I didn't really do any tinning on this apple tree at this stage. Uh, possibly uh, later on I may, and, uh, but I'm in no great hurry. I'm letting it uh, concentrate on, on growing and um, letting it establish itself, letting it establish those own roots. Here we have... Um, A plum and this plum now is it's uh, called blue tit and uh, it is supposed to be quite a nice plum but we haven't had any uh, any plums on it yet um, I will take you to its neighbor it's another plum and uh, it does have uh, it's probably our most reliable plum by far and I don't know if we can see up here you can see the little plums and we'll go over up to there. I don't know if we can see there. And we'll bring you higher up. There we really go. There we go. Oops. I just, sorry about that. I just, just knocked one of my plums off. They're easy to knock. They'll, they'll uh, do a process of natural tenon or they will be tinned by their owner who holds pencil at them, <laughs> at them and toss, knocks them off. So um, we'll, uh, yeah, this is a, a very good, uh, this is one's called Marjorie Seedlin. So I would, uh, I recommend this. There's a lot of talk there about the likes of Victoria and uh, Opal, but uh, I would take this over them, the Marjorie Seedlin. It's a really great plum. And if you, uh, if, if you want a plum recommendation, go with that one, very good. Uh, this one is a gauge, which is in the relation of the, uh, the plum, plum family. And this one's Ulin's Golden Gauge. So, another victim of wind. And um, what it has done is, what any tree will do, will they'll shind up their shoots vertically when they are knocked down like this. So we'll see if we can find the plum here. We can. Okay, and there may be some more here. You really have to look for the, the plums because they can be well hidden with the, the leaves, and which is good because it helps protect from uh, the birds. You can see also that the plums are not the only thing that's on the tree. We have a, a snail that's deciding he wants to take a, a, go into the shade. you over to we'll take you over to our red currants and um, these can you can see how they're coming along and they're still starting to grow uh, now funny enough the red currants actually come out before the black currants but they're possibly the fruit and isn't as advanced as the black currants at this particular time so while they're out earlier they aren't with fruit in earlier so um, next to it we have um, a gooseberry and uh, this is a very good gooseberry we have this is our own gooseberry you can see how it's doing at this stage and well, that's er this is early in the year another goose Actually, I'm sorry, this is a black currant, my fault. My apologies, uh, I'm mislabeling my trees. 
Uh, but that's not a, that's a, actually a black currant. That is not a gooseberry. Sorry. And indeed, all of these here are black black currants. What is a gooseberry is this. <laughs> and the gooseberry is different than the black currant in that it has, I don't know if you can see the little hairy uh, fibers that's on the gooseberry. That's how one of the reasons you one of the ways you could recognize the gooseberry. Little hairs, no harm. Of course, you can eat the whole berry, no problem. Very tasty, and um, especially when they ripen up and they go that yellowish green color. So uh, I have got two varieties of cherries here. One is Lapkins, and the other one is uh, Sunburst. And um, this particular one here is uh, just a little bit ahead of that one there and it's in the fruit and size and what we will do eventually when we get to it is we'll put them along the wall which is uh, wonderful for, for for cherries it gives them a little bit more heat although they're they're very good even in, in the open but the biggest problem with cherries is um, they when they don't they don't need to ripen for the birds to actually love them they'll eat them pretty green long, long long before we would even venture to go eat a cherry the birds will say mm, yeah that's that's my dinner right there that's my dinner and dessert and that's what they will uh, they'll, they'll love it so um, I think we will uh, say thank you for joining us and we hope if you like the video subscribe uh, if you haven't already thank you for all those have have take care of yourself and enjoy the day God bless